If I'm watching a musical, chances are I'm gonna be happy. If I'm watching a western, I'm gonna feel cool. If I'm watching horror, I'm gonna be scared. So why do we love horror? If the purpose of the movie is to scare the ever-living shit out of you, you'd think the appropriate reaction would be to stay the hell away. Yet it's remained one of the most popular genres throughout the history of film. It's been there since the start and hasn't let up since. So why? One reason why we love horror is for the thrill of it. To experience the feeling of being scared, and the excitement of not knowing how exactly you are going to be scared. Any truly great horror film must deliver their own specific definition of the word scared. I haven't seen that many horror movies, so the scariest movie I've ever seen is The Shining. The Shining's definition of scared is a very uncomfortable unease building up to being full-blown, running for your life, terrified. It's very primal, like you are the lizard and the movie is all these snakes. Another really scary movie I've seen is Ari Aster's Hereditary, which is a different kind of fear altogether. Hereditary is still fucking scary as shit, but it's not the ah, run away scary. It's the scary that can be swapped out with synonyms like creepy and spooky. There's missable details in the background that won't make you jump, just uncomfortable. Like a bug is crawling on the back of your neck. And then when you feel frantically to swat it away, you find it isn't there anymore. One of the reasons why I watch movies, in general, is for a unique emotional experience. It's uncomfortable to not know exactly how you're going to feel for the next two hours. And in the case of horror, it's even more uncomfortable because you know you'll most probably not feel very good. Horror is the genre that's the easiest to point to and find emotions and feelings that aren't pleasurable, which is exactly why it's so exciting to watch them and feel so good to complete them. There's a sense of accomplishment that comes after enduring a terrifying movie. You overcame your fear. Horror films can trigger a real fight or flight response without going through any tangible real world risk. Michael Myers is on screen terrorizing Halloween Town, but behind the bars of your screen, you're nice and snug and safe with no one waiting behind you with a knife. Hopefully. Since you are voluntarily putting yourself through an uncomfortable situation, it can then make you more resilient against scary situations in the real world and other scary horror movies. This is similar to exposure therapy, which is used to treat phobias. Let's say you've got agoraphobia. To cure this using exposure therapy, you'd gradually, willingly enter more and more crowded spaces. One week it's on the street, next week it's in the park, and before you know it, it's American Black Friday. It's about voluntarily confronting the phobia in a controlled environment, which is exactly what you're doing when you watch a genuinely scary horror film. It's so much more fun to suffer with your friends. Horror movies have this unique power to bring us together. Other than maybe comedy, horror is, in my opinion, the best genre to watch socially. Horror films can even become comedies if they're terrible enough. Hello? Hello? Pete! Pete! Help us! Help! Please! Pl please help! <sighs> but it's even better if the movie is good at what it does and is genuinely scary. Because when you're vulnerable with another person, it creates a sense of intimacy. There's a reason why horror is the cliche date night movie. Another big power that movies have is not only to deliver an emotional experience, but also teach something valuable. And since that lesson or moral is in the skin of an emotional experience and a story, you're prone to emotion storytelling ancient monkey brain is going to remember it better. Good horror films contain symbolic representations of real fears. Get Out tackles real social and racial fears. The Shining addresses domestic abuse and the fear of the unknown. That's the shit that makes the scares compelling and disturbing on a deep level. The question remains, why do we willingly put ourselves through horror films and enjoy it? Two words, morbid curiosity. According to Wikipedia, this is the curiosity on objects of death, violence, or any other event that may cause harm physically or emotionally. At face value, this human characteristic doesn't make too much sense. Whenever there's a part of our brains that doesn't make too much sense in our civilized 21st century world, it only makes sense to go all the way back in time 
to the Ooga Booga Caveman days. Times were tough back in the prehistoric days, and people died a lot. A tree fell on Eddie, Cynthia got eaten by a baby mammoth, and Jared jumped off a cliff and did not land in the lake. When people died in 200 AD, would the other cavemen just look away? No, they were just as messed up as us watching the purge. Their morbid curiosity kicked in and they made sure to look at the strawberry jam at the bottom of the cliff. Why? Well, so they wouldn't do the same thing. An unconscious part of us compels us to look at violent and disturbing things so that we can learn from the mistakes of Eddie, Cynthia, and Jared, rest in peace, and move on with our caveman lives with that extra survival knowledge. It's a survival thing. Now fast forward many years later and we've got the same brains in different circumstances. And this evolutionary tick has created the popularity of an entire genre and made Netflix millions and millions of dollars in true crime documentaries. Horror also allows us to explore the taboo parts of ourselves. Professor Malcolm Turvey says that the beast within is the most popular theory explaining the genre's popularity. It argues that an unconscious, repressed part of every human is actually savage. That the veneer of civility is very thin and beneath that is essentially a monster. According to this idea, although we consciously disapprove of what the monster is doing, Deep down, part of us enjoys seeing the murder and mayhem the monster unleashes, because if we could, we would do that. We don't just identify with the hero, but also with the serial killer, the clown, or unhinged Jack Nicholson. Horror allows us to explore the darker, often repressed parts of ourselves. We identify with the characters and question our own morals and tipping point. Characters in horror films are making difficult ethical decisions under crazy intense pressure and very often making the wrong ones. Since not having been put in a difficult moral situation does not implicitly make you a good person, what horror films do is create these moral dilemmas for us to experience emotionally, then ponder about without having to deal with them explicitly. They can be a tool to help your personal growth and self-actualization. When the horror movie ends, there's usually a scene when they explain exactly how and why the monster did what they did. We can also enjoy that final card. The process of finding and figuring it all out. Not just narratively, the how, to get the satisfying feeling that comes with being given the answer to the mystery and finished film, but also psychologically, the why, to understand how someone could do something so evil. If you do stay the hell away from horror and haven't given it an honest shot, I do urge you to at least dip your toes if you haven't tried. Get out of your Hallmark Christmas movie Big Bang Theory easily digestible comfort zone, Sharon. You might think it's not worthy of your cinematic appreciation. Only Criterion box sets for me, please. No big budget pieces of garbage rampant with cheap jump scares, dull-witted character tropes, and oh, predictable plot beats. <coughs> <coughs> But if you're interested in movies, there could be an untapped gold mine of quality cinema hiding behind the horror label. Another turnoff could be to worry that you watch a movie that genuinely scares the shit out of you and ramps the electricity bill up in your house for weeks on end, which is something I think about a lot. What if this next horror movie is the one and it scares me so much I stop functioning normally? Well, this is life, baby and you gotta take risks to get to the good shit. This video is for you, Sharon, to consider Silence of the Lambs along with The Road to Christmas. For you, Eugene, to stop scoffing and realize that Eyes Without a Face is in Criterion. And for me, or maybe you, to stop being such a little baby and click play.